Un saludo muy especial a nuestra iglesia, comunidad cristiana carismática, la esperanza en el lugar santísimo. <laughs> Citas con Dios. Good evening, church, brothers and sisters. We want to thank uh, Pastor Alberto and Yuri for allowing us this time with you. Um, I'm going to share something from the heart. Um, and my wife will eventually <laughs> help with the translation. So I promise in the coming years, at some point, I will know Spanish <laughs> so I can speak clearly in Spanish to you directly. So thank you for your time. Thank you for tuning in um, and blessings upon you. I, I pray that um, the words we share today um, sink into your heart, into your spirit and uh, bring some comfort and peace to you. And that's that's basically what I want to share with you today is in the midst of this storm that we um, remember who God says we are and that we are his children. Uh, we are uh, kings and priests, uh, as he says. And one of the things I want to share was with what um, Pastor Alberto shared earlier today in his sermon. Um, and it's from Proverbs 3, 5 through 7. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. And when I when I shared that with him uh, earlier in the week, I, I know he had been having some health problems and it was just some encouragement for him. But it's encouragement for all of us, really, especially in this time of trial. Um, and, and, and if by some reason you've got loved ones that maybe have contracted the virus or sick or struggling right now, then, then you know, let this be a, a, a comfort uh, to your spirit and, um, and to your hearts that God is in control. He is a sovereign God and he will, he will bring us through this if we if we don't rely on our own understanding of this, we have to trust in him. And so a few weeks ago, uh, me and my wife shared with our, our Bible study here, um, talking about faith and belief. And uh, I don't know if any of you are boxing fans, but I started off by, by mentioning a, a, um, a quote from one of the famous boxers here, Mike Tyson. He's been retired a long time, but he said this uh, back when he was in his prime. He said, everyone has a plan till they get punched in the mouth. <laughs> so I thought of that when all this started a few weeks back last month and, and how so many of us as Christians um, claim our faith is strong. And it's easy to do that when everything's going well. Um, but when something happens in our lives, when there's a trial that comes, and, or we get punched in the mouth, so to speak, by life. <laughs> How are we at reacting? Are we, are we truly believing in that faith that we claim to have before? Or do we panic? Or, or worse yet, and I, and I think I'll share that here in a moment, I, I wrote down in my notes, that we're even spreading fear. We're not even just fearful ourselves in our hearts, but we're spreading that fear amongst others, with, which is worse, obviously. So... Um, there was another quote here from uh, Charles Swindoll. He was a pastor here in the U.S. Um, it says, life is 10% what happens to you and 90% how you react to it. And that goes along with what I just mentioned. How are we reacting as Christians in this trial? It, it really is a, a, an opportunity for us as Christians to share the gospel with people who are fearful, who are worried, who don't have the faith or the relationship with Jesus Christ that we do. And, uh, and, and that's what that, that quote is pertaining to. And of course, one of the most famous quotes uh, in history from a president of the United States back during World War II, or right before World War II, said, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. And that is, that's, that's almost a, a bigger issue right now than, than the actual virus, I think, maybe. And, uh, and, and while it's dissipating now as time goes along, um, it's still... There's many people that have been in bondage of fear right now through this. And, uh, and right now, I, I pray for those people. I, I, I pray for the comfort and peace of Jesus Christ be upon their hearts. 
Um, so as Christians, uh, how have we been reacting after being punched in the mouth? <laughs> Are we being fearful or we're spreading fear? Now, don't get me wrong. God gives us wisdom and we should probably use it more than we do at times. Uh, but we are, le- but are we letting adversity grip us or paralyze us? And, and, and that's what we want to avoid in this time. Um, the first time the Bible mentions fear is in Genesis chapter 3 in verse 10. So he said, I heard your voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. And that's, of course, Adam after they had uh, been disobedient and eaten the fruit. Uh, that they shouldn't have, obviously, that caused all this trouble to begin with. <laughs> um, the last time in the in the Bible that it's mentioned is in Revelation 21.8, and, and this is something I've really been thinking about lately, um, because because of fear and unbelief. Um, though the the two things mentioned in, in this passage, as it goes on to list some of the main reasons why people will be cast. Uh, into the lake of fire. But the first two that are listed, it says, but the fearful and unbelieving. And it goes on to say murderers, uh, whoremongers, sorcerers, etc. Um, one of the things I, I realized back when I was studying um, the uh, Israelites uh, being uh, led back to their, to Israel, <laughs> back to the promised land by Moses, um, that travel that took 40 years um, should have only taken 11 days. And what stopped them really was fear. Um, the, the fear of the unknown, the fear of what was there waiting for them, etc. And, and when I read this passage in Joshua, I realized that in most cases, the fear that we have in our hearts, whatever we're fearing probably fears us more. Um, you know, me and my wife saw snakes recently just taking a walk around the neighborhood. And of course, we, you know, we retracted in fear. But quite frankly, those snakes were scurrying off because they were more fearful than us. And so in Joshua 2, uh, verses 8 and 9, um, it says, And before they were laid down, she came up unto them upon the roof. And she said unto, unto the men, I know that the Lord hath given you the land and that your terror is fallen upon us, and that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. So in this passage, um, it's discussing the two spies that Joshua sent uh, into Jericho, I believe. And um, the whole point, though, that I'm trying to make is that they spent all these years fearful of what awaited them there, and because of the original spies that went in and said that it's a land of giants, uh, but meanwhile, the people there were fearful of the Israelites after they heard what they had. They escaped Egypt and what they had done to the Egyptians and to Pharaoh, etc. So they were sitting there in fear, awaiting the day of them arriving. So, again, in that passage, it goes on to talk about how, how uh, Rahab mentions about their God and how fearful they are of their God because how powerful he is and that the God goes with them. And, and that's how we should feel right now. We, we should know the God that is with us, um, the God that sees us, um, the God that abides with us. And if we abide with him, um, you know, we, we should be able to be restful. And we'll get into another passage here shortly about that. So, And that passage is in Matthew 8, 23 through 27. It's, it's the passage, uh, the wind and the waves obey Jesus. It's starting in verse 23. Now when he got into the boat, his disciples followed him. And suddenly a great tempest arose on the sea, so that the boat was covered with the waves. But he was asleep. Then his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us, we are perishing. But he said to them, Why are you fearful, O you of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. So the men marveled, saying, Who can this be that even the winds and the sea obey him? Um, and again, I, I just want to reiterate, by, by faith and belief, you know, they, they, they had been walking with Jesus this whole time, yet the minute a trial arose, 
they became fearful again, not knowing who was there in the boat with them, um, not, not understanding at that point uh, what they had. And that's what we need to do. We need to understand that who we are, the promises of God that he's given to us, that we need to believe in our hearts. Um, in Matthew 17, 20, uh, it, it says, So Jesus said to them, Because of your unbelief, for assuredly, I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. And again, that's because of who abides in us, that we believe in that faith that we talk about. Um, and that faith obviously can be as small as a mustard seed, um, but it's the belief that act activates that faith. Um, so our beliefs are things that we are thoroughly convinced of. Uh, usually, but not always, they are ideas, concepts that we gather through acquiring information and experience. Because of that, our beliefs can change over time as we gain more knowledge and experience more things throughout our lives. So how is faith different? Um, in the dictionary, the meaning of faith, it says, it's a noun, uh, confidence or trust in a person or thing. And to me, this is an easier way to understand the difference here. There's a Faith equals belief times action times confidence. So faith includes our beliefs, but it is bigger than that. Faith requires action. If it doesn't move us to do something or say something, actually take some kind of action. It's not really faith at all. And James says it this way. So you see, faith by itself isn't enough unless it produces good deeds. It is dead and useless. And again, we have this faith that we that we uh, talk about having, but are we truly believing in it when the time comes to to uh, for action, for deeds, for works, and and by that standard, are we truly changed by that faith um, when when it's needed for us to be able to minister to others, for us to be able to help those in need, help our brothers and sisters as it's needed, especially in a time like this. Um, so the last part of that faith question is, uh, equation, is confidence. And confidence is trust that is based on knowledge or past experience. Basically, confidence is a measure of how firmly we hold to a particular belief. So putting it all together, so now you can see how belief and faith are interrelated. The difference between the, the two is subtle, but understanding it makes it things like what Jesus said in Matthew 17, 20, uh, above make a whole lot more sense. When we believe the truth with enough confidence to take action, we exercise faith. And it doesn't uh, take much faith to see huge things happen, even miraculous things. And you can see where unbelief, that is believing things that aren't true, believing lies, completely clogs up the workings in our faith. Unbelief prevents us from ever seeing the miraculous in our lives. Too often we spend time and energy trying to increase our faith when Jesus says, that's not really our problem. We pray and plead with God, uh, begging him to give us more faith. But our problem is really with unbelief, not a lack of faith. The good news is that we can change our unbelief into belief. It's really fairly simple, straightforward process. We just need to become more fully persuaded of the truth instead of the misconceptions and lies that we are currently holding on to. The more we expose our minds to the truth, the more we become persuaded and convinced of that truth. So what I, again, in finishing and closing here, I, I just want to, again, uh, encourage you to trust in the Lord with all your heart. Uh, and, and there may, and I, and I know there's struggles in this world. I know there's um, you know, there's realities in the flesh that we have to deal with. Um, we have jobs, we have finances, we have loved ones who are sick. Um, we have to, you know, do our best to, to manage those things here. Um, but we have to know who abides in us that'll help us get us through that, that trial, through that fire. And, and that gives us that confidence and boldness, um, to believe by faith, uh, that we too will get through this. Um, I've used this this uh, picture recently, and I like it, so I'm going to use it again. <laughs> so as Christians, 
we're constantly going to have these battles come against us. And I picture this as a group of soldiers that come up against us every once in a while in our life. But because of who abides in us, we have the high ground. And, and because of that position, and because of the confidence and boldness um, that we have in Christ, I can see beyond that. I can see the victory beyond that battlefield that's in front of me right now. And knowing that the victory is already won makes it so much easier to get through that trial period. We can, we can go through it with confidence and trust and belief and uh, knowing that the grace of God is with us. In closing, I just want to encourage each and every one of you to stay faithful, but to, to, to cast off your unbelief and, uh, and trust in the Lord that abides in you. And we'll all get through this together. So in closing, I just want to pray for each and every one of you. Um, Father, um, thank you for this time together. Um, thank you for each and every one of the people that are watching this right now and hearing, hearing your word. Uh, we're just the vessels, Father. And, uh, and we thank you for your grace and your mercy continually, and especially in these times of trial, Lord, when we need you most. We need to rely on you and rest in you. Rest with you in that boat, boat in, the, in the middle of the storm, Lord. And, uh, and we know we'll get to shore. Uh, we'll get to that pasture of peace on the other side of the battle, Father. So I ask that uh, your peace and your grace and your mercy and your strength and your comfort be upon each and every one of the people here right now, Father. And we lift up our pastors, Alberto, uh, for full restoration, for full healing. Uh, Pastora Yuri, um, with all the work that she does for the ministry, Lord, and, and her, her heart. Her heart for you and for her her sheep uh, uh, each and every day, Father. So we thank you, Lord, and we ask all this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God bless you all.